Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Ken coming to you again in that profound name, Lord Jesus Christ, honoring a God who promised to never fail us, to never leave us, but to be with us always, even to the end of the ages. It is with great joy, amen, that we come into your homes, your automobiles, and wherever you may be listening to this telecast today, amen, to tell you that God will do Amen. What he has said he will do. He is a faithful God. Amen. We thank God for our beloved pastor, Apostle Dr. General Groover. Amen. Who pastors the two churches here in Jacksonville at 1317 Royal Avenue. Amen. In the, the Lakeland Church, the Greater Refuge Temple in Lakeland, Florida at 1258 North Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. It is a pleasure today. Amen. That you have given us this opportunity. Amen. To reach out and to bless you in some small way. Amen. We want to thank God today on this first Sunday. Amen. As the Lord will bless us as we commune on the ground today. Amen. To say to the Lord, we thank him for his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And what God is constantly doing. Amen. For his beloved children. We thank God today. May God bless our world, bless our nation, amen, bless our country, bless our churches, bless our pastors, amen, to preach the, un, uh, the, the, uh, the undulterated word of God. Preach it with joy, preach it with love, so souls can reach out and receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. What will we do without the Lord? in our lives. So if there's someone with a special need or special request today, amen, please inbox us, email us, and let us know, amen, the miracle that you desire of God so that God can bless you, amen, and take you where, amen, he desire for you to go. So don't forget to share with at least three people doing this week, amen, as we, amen, start in the month of February, amen, to reach out, touch somebody, touch a life, Amen. You never know the life you touch may be a life that you save and you help to make it to the kingdom. So we thank God today for all of our churches, your special gifts, your tithes, your offerings. Amen. For those who are not members of Greater Refuge, who, amen, send us a love gift. We say thank you so much, amen, during these times. So may the Lord continue to bless you, amen, in a special way. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, for your compassion that faileth not, but is renewed day by day. We thank you, O oh God, for we look to you. And when cometh all of our help, some have said, all of my help cometh from the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth. We thank you today. We pray for our world, our nation, we pray for our first responders. We pray for those who serve us. We pray that you bless them and keep them safe, oh God, during this time. Oh God, as we go through this pandemic and bless our seniors and bless those, oh God, in the nursing homes, the hospital rooms who are sick and, oh God, going through a difficult moment. But you're a God that can do anything but fail. Bless and heal now and we give you glory. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Certainly, we are expecting a high time today. We're going to go to our Lakeland Church. Amen. Where our district elder Jeff Davis is assistant pastor. There will come and read our scripture. Amen. And after that, we'll have a song. Praise the Lord, everyone, and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our scripture will be coming from... Hebrew, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 6, and it reads as such. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God, a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained the witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it 
he being dead, yet speak. By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Thank God for the reading of God's holy word. Greetings. We invite you to join us during Black History Month as we journey through time, reflecting on the accomplishments of notable African Americans. From slavery to the 21st century, Black Americans have persevered and broken barriers. Amanda Gorman, the first National Youth Poet Laureate delivered the inauguration poem, The Hill We Climb. On January 20th, Kamala Harris became the 49th Vice President of the United States of America, making history as first female and first African American. Commander Victor Glover is the first African American astronaut to live on International Space Station capsule for six months. This is only a few extraordinary people who didn't let barriers deter their course to success. This has been a moment in Black history.
coming to us my own, amen, apostle, Dr. General Gruber, who will come and bless us, amen, from the word of God, amen, a word from the Lord. God bless you. The song just kept it says, King of my life, I crown you now. Thou shall the glory be. And it's an old hymn that um, just reminds us to stay near the cross so that we won't forget Gethsemane. Because it was in Gethsemane where everything that we need, he finished the work. He did it for us. Amen. King of my life, I crown you now. Thou share the glory. Your thorn crown 
Praise the Lord, everyone, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessing it is for us to come your way once again with the gospel of Jesus Christ, encouraging those people who have come to believe and know that Jesus Christ is Lord and how prepared he has made us in carrying out his purpose. And he is seeing to it that nothing will interfere with his purpose. For he said that all, all these things come about for the good. All those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Whatever comes, it is for our good. The Lord has prepared us, and that's what I'd like for us to talk about today is how prepared we are for the service of which the Lord God Almighty has chosen us for. And we'll take a closer look at who God is and who he has made us to be. We are God's own creation from a different perspective of which we sometimes may think. It is a spiritual creation. It's a spiritual uh, body. And I'd like for us to look at it from that perspective. Our subject matter that we have been using in 2020 is the vision of the kingdom. And the subtopic to that for 2021 is I can see you better now. Because of the things that which the Lord has caused to be, he has a, caused us to be given time to spend more time with him to really understand who he is and who he is bringing us to be or helping us to see who we are. And the scripture I'd like to use it is from the Gospel of St. John. And we began reading with verse 10. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which was born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. What we are so designed to be is not a natural creature as much as a spiritual creature. We are now 
not created, a man had nothing to do with who the Lord has designed or has caused us to be. He does not want us to take on the image of the first Adam, but the image of the second Adam. He wants us to have access to the spiritual realm of life, service and demonstration. It, it, it is God's way of creating or bringing about a second self. I've used this expression before, the second self. When he presented himself on the cross, he, he gave himself to his father but he was not finished with his purpose in coming and dying on Calvary and transforming himself from a natural man to a, a spiritual man. So he became spiritual, so he can bleed, so he can feel what we feel, so he would pay the debt that we owed because we had sin against the Lord. We had failed to lived up to God's final purpose of which he died. So the process is ongoing as it relates to becoming who the Lord want us to be. So now we're in the process of becoming his second self fully, not halfway, but totally, to the point that we shall be able to carry out the finished work of which he died to cause to be. According to Colossians, the first chapter in verse 24, Paul expresses himself this way. He said, who now rejoice uh, in much suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. He is saying to us that there is still a process that's going on. And the Lord is causing and bringing out what his purpose for dying and the finishing of his work for his redemption and for as the price being paid, it was paid on Calvary. We understand that. But he died on Calvary, hung there. So that you and I, as believers in him, 
can become everything he wants us to be. So often perhaps you have heard me say that we are not there yet. Paul made a, a statement of, he declared that I have not achieved, I have not accomplished yet, but I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God which is in Christ Jesus. So it is important for us to understand that there is a, there is a development that's going on and it's spiritual. It is beyond what we see with the natural eye. It is the power of God that is being developed in us and around us and for us that we might become his second self in him completing what he came to do. Uh, shedding off what need to be shed it off and I really don't believe that we can achieve this and it will not happen to any one of us unless we see that we're not there yet and allow the Lord to continue doing what he is good at doing. He wants us to greater enhance his glory for coming. He wants us to make him more paramount to all. He mentions his own suffering, Paul did for the Church of Christ. He said on our behalf that we may be conformed to resting solely upon the Holy Ghost, the Spirit there's nothing we can receive from anyone because every good and perfect gift, it comes down from above, from the Father of lights, where there is no variableness, no shatter of turning. He wants us to be transformed spiritually. And he said, as many as received him, he gave us power to become the sons of God. And I don't believe that this is just receiving the Holy Ghost. But I believe it is a development that is in the process of ongoing. It is a process of which we need to be honestly and thankful that God wants us to be more like himself. To accomplish full and completely what he came and suffered so much for. He wants us to believe and trust him. He's with us. He is encouraging us through songs that he puts in the hearts of different ones of us to encourage, to keep us lifted up, keep us looking to the Lord. 
so that we can trust God for what he is accomplishing in us and know that we are able to do it because when the Lord said, upon this rock I build my church, the gates of hell shall not prevail. We need to understand how powerful we are because we are being molded and shaped into the very image of our Lord Jesus Christ putting on the same spiritual strength and power and anointing of which he himself died so that we can have. May we trust God for this. For he wants us to have it. He's in the midst of us now to help us to see, to encourage us, to bless us. He'll have one or the other of us to say something, do something, to encourage us, to keep us lifted, keep us believing, keep us moving with him. Because all of this is to be done by the Holy Ghost it doesn't matter how much money, how many cars, or how many houses you have. This will not do it. It is by the power of the Holy Ghost. We need the operation of the Holy Ghost. We look again in the Gospel of St. John, the first chapter, when he lets us know that in verse 13, which was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This that God is doing, man had nothing to do with it. He said, as many as receive him, he give them power to become the sons of God. So this son of God, this second self of our Lord Jesus Christ is the results of all God, all God. I'm not saying that we cannot be saved, uh, receive the Holy Ghost and just sit down and, and not go any further. But what a shame that would be for us not to be able to envision and see beyond, and look beyond ourselves and see the greatness of God and move with God. As the 14th verse have said in St. John 1, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, and the, as the glory only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the Word was made flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. This is the glory, full of grace and truth. God is saying to us, this can only be done by the power of the Holy Ghost. It is important for us to spend some time with God. The Lord has caused us to be shut away for a while, and I believe all of this is God's plan, bringing us 
close to him, things of which we would not normally do ourselves because we have, we allowed ourselves to become homesteaded wherever we were. were. It was almost like Jerusalem when they failed to go anywhere else until persecution came into to Jerusalem. When they were scattered abroad to expand the church. So the Lord is still accomplishing his purpose. His second self is being developed right now. He himself has taken part in it. I'd like for us to look at the uh, Zephaniah the third chapter and verse 17. The Bible said, The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice with thee. With joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. The Lord our God in the midst of us is mighty. He wants us to see him, feel him, and be blessed by him and enjoy him in the service. It is through this process that God has given us increase. We are becoming more like God. We are becoming more fulfilling of his purpose. He, he wants us to know that he is blessing us to be more like himself, his second self, of which he is carrying out in the body of Christ. May we all see it and understand that he wants us to be more like him. First John 3, the Bible says, Behold how great, how pleasant it is, how wonderful it is for us to be called the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. The world knew him not, so the world will not know who we are, yet we are the sons of God. And he is helping us to be like him. He is blessing us, we're on our way, causing us to move with him, to be more like him. To be like the Lord is to be a force, a power, to have strength, to have victory, to have, not that you won't be persecuted or, 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 about trials. This is what causes us to be more like him, is when we can see ourselves as being an overcomer. He said unto us, I believe it's Revelation 3rd chapter and verse 20 or 21, that he that overcometh will he cause to sit in the seat with him. We have what it takes to overcome. We have God. We have God. He is with us. The Almighty is in the midst of us. He is mighty. He's rejoicing. He is singing with us. He is saying to each of us, come on and, 
and and let's finish what I started a while ago. What I finished on Calvary. Come and let's finish what I finished on Calvary. You know, in other words, there's a second finish. Because he said on the cross, Father, well, I've finished the things that you've told me to do. Give me back the glory that I had with you before the world was. But there's a second finish that is being taken care of now. It's the people he came to die for. Glory to God. Those that he came to die for, let them be harnessed in the anointing. Let them be blessed with the covering of his Holy Spirit. That they not only could accomplish this, but bless them to feel invincible. Because the Lord declared upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Because he is the church. He is who we serve. He wants us to know that I want you to be like me. You can go through this, you can go through that. You can overcome anything that come against you. Lift your hands and give God praise for it because you you have what it takes. You have the victory. May the Lord God Almighty help us to see and look forward to being who he died for us to be. Jesus Christ, who is the head of his church, We are his body. The Apostle Paul gave us through the second, first, first Corinthians, the 12th chapter, of how the organs in the body work together in making sure that all the links play their part. Naturally, unfortunately, deterioration and death of some of the weaker members of the body for whatever reason. And, 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 and as a result, it deteriorates. But the second self, glory to God, the man, the woman, who allow God to prepare us to be who he died for us to be. We become invincible, we become victorious, we become overcomers. The Lord would not allow because of our faith, because of our position with him, because we have become more like him. Not that difficult things will not come. Just as difficult things came as Jesus Christ was making his way through to Calvary, but he overcame all of them and his second self shall do likewise. Just rest assured, saints of the Most High God, the Lord Jesus Christ is giving us victory over every obstacle, every test, we shall pass it. 
because we're going with him with our eyes and our vision upon the kingdom of God. I just believe that every one of you, since this pandemic started, that you feel God, you see God better than you did before. But he isn't finished yet. He hasn't, he hadn't finished with us. May the Lord bless us to keep looking and believing and, and, and trusting God, knowing that he is bringing it to pass. He, he, he wants us to feel it's all right. He, he wants us, daughter, sons, he wants us to feel, oh God, if he be for us, who can be against us? He wants us to, to not to be anxious for nothing, but all things by prayer and supplication. Letting our requests be made known unto God. The Lord want us to let our requests made known. He wants us to show the world that I believe that God is taking us places and no one can stop us. We're headed to the promised land. It is the kingdom of which God declared belongs to his children. Even after all of the tests we may have gone through, you're gonna make it more than a conqueror. God has given you the victory over the adversary. May God bless you to get a glimpse of what I'm saying to you this day. The Lord wants you more like him, invincible. That's who he was. Glory to God. And all they, they did to him he rose above it all. He's developing us to be more like himself. He hung on that cross from the sixth until the ninth hour. He hung, died, and got up on the third day morning. Some of the saints got out of the graves and went to the holy city, demonstrating in spite of all that you've done to me. I have accomplished what I came to do. And so are we. This is his finished work. His children being like him. May God bless you and keep you strong, keep you looking to the one, promise never to leave nor forsake you. This we ask it in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you, keep you growing and developing and becoming more like the Lord Jesus Christ.
the Lord. And because this is our communion Sunday and we want to take our communion in unison. And I hope that you have your communion kit with you. If you are in your automobile or wherever you may be, you may be at home. Because of the pandemic, we are not assembling in our sanctuaries as we normally do for our services and communion. But those of you that have your communion kit, let us prepare to do that now in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. We want to ask God's blessings upon the cup, upon the bread, in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of your Son, as we prepare now to take this communion, of which you declared, as often as we do this, we show forth your death until you come. And we thank you for taking communion with us before you ascended back to glory. Ask you to bless now as we follow through, reminding ourselves of your shed blood, your love, cause you to give your life for us. In Jesus' name, bless the cup, bless the bread. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord took through the bread and he blessed it saying that this is my body that was broken for you. For all of your physical needs, my body is being broke for you. With his stripes, he said you are healed. Whatever your physical needs are, As he broke his own body, no man take my life, but I lay it down. And he said unto his disciples, as he prepared to ascend back to glory, he said, eat, eat all of it. In Jesus' name. After the same manner, he took the cup and he blessed it, saying that this is my blood in the New Testament that was shed for you. Before I sit back, I want you to know how I love you. This is my blood, though your sins be black and scarlet, they shall be white as snow, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. All your sins, past, present, and future, glory to God, is under the blood. In Jesus' name, and he said, drink ye all of it. God, 
people of God, let us remember that this first Sunday was about what it take not only to take us through 2021, but to take us through eternity. May the Lord bless you, may he keep you, may his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. And until next time, may God richly bless you. Here's my prayer. Praise the Lord and thank you for joining us for today's parking lot and virtual worship with the service of Holy Communion on the first Sunday of Black History Month. Certainly we received a mighty and encouraging word from the Lord today. Yes, we are in the midst of a pandemic but our God is still showing himself strong. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Tune in this Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our midweek worship, where we are always blessed with the timely and anointed word from heaven. Remember, we have been commissioned to evangelize the world for Jesus Christ. Are you making any progress this year and during your part to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, make sure to call at least three people this week and share your story of God's love with them and then invite them to join us in worship. Are you being blessed through this ministry and would like to sow a seed? Giving opportunities are on your screen. Don't forget to press the like button or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to submit your praise report so that we can share some brightness with our viewing audience. Write to us today and tell us how God has blessed you and your family. Are you in need of prayer? Our pastors and the prayer team are standing by and they will love to touch and agree with you. You may call the church office at area code 904-768-4009 inbox us type your name in the comments or email your prayer request to refugejacks at yahoo.com we look forward to hearing from you and praying with you we send our love and prayers right now to those who are experiencing especially tough times and our heartfelt condolences to the families who are experiencing bereavement now, if you haven't received your water baptism in Jesus' name, what are you waiting for? You still have time. We are here on the temple's grounds today. So if you're not here with us, call us at area code 904-768-4009 and let us know that you are on your way. We want everyone who desires to go down in water to be baptized today in Jesus' name. So until this Wednesday at 7 p.m., as our pastor, the most honorable apostle, Dr. Gentle El Gruber says, it's getting better all the time.